Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. Grandma Gail. So today, guys, we're joined by writer and director Hallie Myers Shire. This is our first filmmaker on the pod, so I'm actually really excited. We're going to talk about the whole filmmaking process, uh, family topics, her new heartwarming film, Good Rich, which Grandma and I both watched. I loved. Which is starring Michael Keaton and Mila Kunis, and that's in theaters October 18th. So for those listening now, that comes out tomorrow. Hallie, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, and you got a little of New York's cool weather I compared did. to L.A. For so. a California girl, it's great. Exactly. I know. Well, we always like to start with sort of your background, where you grew up, and how you kind of got into filmmaking. Well, I grew up in L.A., and I got into filmmaking because it's really a family business. Both of my parents are filmmakers, so I had a really unique upbringing where it was a big part of my life. And, you know, I grew up on, on film sets and just with a great appreciation and education in film. And I think when you're so exposed to something as a child, you kind of either really want to do it and you're drawn to it mm -hmm. or you go in the opposite yeah. direction. Right. My sister went in the opposite direction and I I went right into it. That's so interesting that... Well, that's so funny yeah. because we were talking about that. Now, your mom did a lot of rom-com. For those who don't right. know, Nancy Myers is her mom who's like actual queen royalty of rom-coms. <laughs> that's and Kimmy's favorite genre, that's for sure. Yeah. It's a great genre. <laughs> Obviously, and Charles Shire is your dad who also has done Father of the Bride. That and all was these my favorite. Yeah. Um, so... Did watching their films directly influence you? Well, watching the filmmaking process, right. for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I had a really unique experience seeing the behind the scenes of what it takes to make a film. Right. And my parents are both writers as well. So it would start with the writing process. Yeah. And then, I mean, back in that day, they they basically handed something into a studio. The studio would make it. People took chances. They right. gave people budgets. Yeah. Actors wanted to be in these kinds of movies. It was a really different time, time. than it is now. Yeah. And um, it, it was a, a great way to to see the film business, to see the crews, to see the tender love and care that they put into those movies. And a lot of those films now for me are sort of like family photo albums. But you know, are. it's like so crazy. They would put my sister and I in the movies. Our our aunts and uncles would be in them. You know? Which is nice because behind the screen, they didn't have to leave you home. Yeah, we you, were there. You were really yeah, on the we set. Really there. Which I think is really very special that your parents did that. Yeah, I, mean, I think know, so really, too. It really was a family business. It really nice. was, yeah. So you were in Parent Trap, right? Was that your first acting gig? They kind of put me in their movies, like you said, so that I could come and hang out. Right. Um, I had no interest Speaking. in no, acting. No, but I remembered your face. I was like, who was she in Parent Trap? And when I go, I was yeah. like, of course, I remembered your face. Like, well, want me to deck her for you. That's, that's my big moment. <laughs> that's iconic. Yeah, I had a, an actual speaking role in that movie. You know, my parents were making a film about 11-year-old girls How when I was an 11-year-old yeah. girl. So, right. so it was great. Yeah, it was, it was great. Apropos. It was very fun, and I, I really enjoyed mm -hmm. that experience. And your directorial Ooh. debut was Home Again with Reese Witherspoon. How did that whole process go for you, and why did that feel like the right project to start with? Well, I, that was, it just was the, the movie that I felt like I wanted to make and mm -hmm. I attached myself to it to direct, which is how I got the job. I yeah. just went out with that screenplay and I, I said that I was going to be directing it. And once Reese came on board, that that made it um, all happen. And I really appreciate her for taking that leap of faith to be in a first time filmmaker's mm -hmm. film. And she was so wonderful mm -hmm. to work with. And everything you think you know about Reese is actually very true. She's She empowers women. She's um, a, a brilliant businesswoman and just a, an absolute partner. So I had a great experience making that movie with her and with my mom. My mom produced that movie. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So nice. Oh, so that was very nice. Yeah. So, like, family, I mean, I obviously work with my grandma every yeah. day. Like, do you guys agree or disagree, like, on a daily basis? Or is it yes. always, yeah. <laughs> we agree and disagree on a daily basis. Yeah. yeah. I say I get fired every couple right. of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> That's just part of working with exactly. family. And also, especially in a creative atmosphere, part of um, 
you know, disagreeing is part of the process mm -hmm. and the best idea wins and good conversations right. and things come out of that. So it's just part of collaborating. Exactly. Yeah. And also, I think when you're working with someone in the family, they're not going to hold back. They're going to tell you what they really feel, which is For good, sure. which is good because you get really are not getting sugar, sugar coated, coated by anybody. Yeah. That's then, true. I always say that about my mom's notes on my scripts are, mm -hmm. are the most challenging notes usually, right. the best ones. Yeah. 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 The result, I think, comes out better in the end if they're going to give their full, like, opinions. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, unless you totally disregard them. But obviously you respect yeah. their opinion. Yeah. And that's the key, I feel like. If right. you don't respect your family member, you probably shouldn't work with them. Well, that's that. Well, I'd be silly not to case. respect her when it came to writing no, films. No, a thousand percent. <laughs> yeah. So for those who are unfamiliar with, like, the filmmaking process, and you can tell us, like, with Goodrich or just in general, like, yeah. How does it go step by step? Like you wrote a screenplay, you wrote Goodrich. Yeah. And then what happens? Well, I wrote Goodrich six years ago. So this oh, was wow. a very slow process. Yeah. As often happens with the independent filmmaking world, it's not easy to get a movie made. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it starts with obviously an idea and something I was noticing in the atmosphere. And it was a personal story for me. My father remarried and oh. had a second set of kids when I was in college. Mm. Oh, so it's very bio. Very personal. Yeah. And I had a complicated relationship towards that and it was interesting to watch him parent again and I had all these feelings around it and so you know as a writer you kind of mm -hmm. sometimes write to understand how you feel about something For sure. and that's just been a story I wanted to tell and I noticed then other people also experiencing that and having unique family situations and dynamics and um, so that was what where the seed of that idea came from. But then it was a long haul to get it actually out in theaters on Friday. Yeah, right. And there's different ways to go about it. For me, I'd written this movie with Michael Keaton in mind. So mm -hmm. my first step was trying to get him attached. Once he came on board, then I was able to kind easy. of why call, him? package it. And why why he was the I right mean, age too. He fits. He yeah, but fits there's so the many age. actors of that age. They're also both obviously iconic stars. Yeah, but like yeah. what me, when you were writing, or I get, or even had your dad in mind, like what reminded him of? Yeah. Michael? Well, you know, it's funny because even though it was a really personal story for me, I never pictured my dad. Yeah. I pictured Michael Keaton. All so funny from day one. Oh, so that was. So great. he was actually a big part of the process for me, just right. in my head. I think it's because I grew up watching a lot of Michael Keaton movies that were comedies mm -hmm. where he was just so lovable and he's a really famous 80s dad yeah. in a lot of ways. And and I just am a big fan of, of his and I hadn't seen him in the genre in a really long time. So And he's I, very, very good. I mean, you know, uh, from watching the movie, which all of you are going to see <laughs> tomorrow, um, it, it's something that he really does touch a, a, your heart. Yeah. Because it, there are issues. I mean, he was trying. Yes. Uh, but he couldn't. It just never came over. And no matter what relationship he was in, it just exploded. Mm -hmm. uh, well, everyone also can relate to like, complicated yeah, parent relationships. Exactly. Well, complicated parents. And also the t the role of he he's a breadwinner. His his second wife didn't work. So he took on that responsibility. Tell us so, when we give away too much also. Well, we'll no, this is okay. great. I love we're not it. gonna we're not gonna give away all of it. But I but I could have empathy with him because I understood because I remember when I was a newlywed, yeah. my husband worked full time and he was never around. Yeah. And I had to raise the children. Right. I mean he was there naturally, but it was like they they dropped in for dinner. Right. And <laughs> they that, dropped and in. By the and way, that was the norm. That was the, the norm. So, and I think it's yeah. hard to put standards from today on that. And yes. in that case, you know, I, I felt for him yeah. in, in the movie. It's a very beautiful movie. You did a beautiful yeah. job. It's kind of hard to unlearn those things, too. Yeah. He was a parent to a child who's, you know, Mila's age. Right. And the society expected different things of him then. Correct. And now he's in, thrust into this situation exactly. where he's a parent in 2024 of two nine-year-olds okay. and the expectations of fathers are very, are very different. different. Yeah. Very, very different. And there's and a lot of comedy in that, too. Right. Well, it, it certainly, it was tearful comedy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. It was terrific. You what, did a beautiful job. Thank totally you. Totally agree. What, like, message are you hoping for people to take away from it? Well, these are the themes, you know, and I think the discussions that I'm hearing are so nice. You know, um, last night we had a big screening and a lot of the response I heard from women was, I'm going to go talk to my dad. I have things I want to say. And this made me want to examine my relationship with my parents. Mm -hmm. And then I spoke to a 24 year old guy who said, now I'm thinking about how I want a parent and mm -hmm. I want to be different than my dad. And those yeah. kind of takeaways are really powerful. And that's 
that's really rewarding for me. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. That it also deals with a lot of complicated topics, drug addiction being one of them. Yeah. When did you kind of decide to put that twist, I guess? In? Well, that's very LA. <laughs> <laughs> An opioid addiction? Exactly. Yes. You got to have some kind of right. addiction. Rehab. Well, the reason I made it rehab was I wanted her to leave for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. I didn't want her to be abandoning her family. So I needed it to be something mm -hmm. that was um, something she absolutely had to do that we would understand why she needed to do that. Of her family. Yeah, and I also think it's a common story mm -hmm. and Very. a lot of people struggle with addiction, so it's relatable. And I also thought it could be interesting in the movie, Michael Keaton's character, Andy, doesn't know that she right. has a drug addiction, right. but everybody so else, else does. Knew. Including so, the including the children. <laughs> yeah. Including the children. Which was so fascinating. Yeah, it was, so I, it I was thought- It was a wonderful, uh, and you know, also I was thinking when you were just talking, yeah. I think in today, in 2024, there are so many uh, divorces and remarriage and, uh, you know, it's no longer a one mom and one dad and children. Right. It's really multiple yeah. uh, fathers and mothers in the mix. And it's the art of how they do it. Mm -hmm. and become successful at it. That's the really the point of the story. You have to keep trying, and it is really a changing of society. Absolutely. And, and that that's very much what I got from the movie, and oh, I thought I it was that. I thought it was beautiful. Gail, I need to take you around with me. You could tell <laughs> me. No, this I really loved it. I called her at 10.30 it. last night. I said, I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What was it like directing such famous mm. actors? I mean, it's it, it, it was always a pinch me moment for me, but at a certain point, you know, they they put their trust in me, which made me feel confident and trust myself. And mm -hmm. my way into directing is is through writing. I wrote the script and I find a lot of, I don't know if other directors feel this way, but a lot of actors' questions are about character. And mm -hmm. even if it's, you know, why am I holding this or wearing this item? It really goes back to the character and the writing. And as the but writer, you know, I know how to answer those questions. Yeah, right. So... For me, it wasn't intimidating because I had a handle on the story that I wanted to tell, but it also came from them. They were so wonderful to work with that, sure. yeah, mm -hmm. it, they made my job easy. And there were both EPs on the project, yeah. too, right? So how does What does that, that mean, Kim? They were both executive producers <laughs> oh, of oh, the project. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what kind of say did they get with that title? Well, a lot of actors are, it, nowadays, yeah produce um, more smaller independent films, which I think is great because when you're wearing a bunch of hats, like everybody's in the mix of the mm -hmm. decisions and it feels like a real collaboration. And they're not just actors in the movie that come in and do their time and leave. You know, they really care. Even now when we're all in the marketing phases of the movie, they, mm -hmm. everybody really cares. That, I mean, that's one of the beautiful things about independent filmmaking is it's a real labor of love for everybody involved. Yeah. Well, I think Hollywood, and I'm only seeing this from what I read, yeah. it's so different than when we're talking about in the 50, 40s, 50s, yeah. 60s. The big studios are really not that important except for maybe on a certain, you know, Disney films or on uh, some of these science uh, sci-fi movies. Yeah. These, the smaller movies, which is like one of yours, yeah. is really independent. And yeah. uh, I don't know if the studios, are they that, are they powerful anymore out in L.A.? Or is it, uh, I mean, do they only specialize in these these spectaculars or are they doing the independent filmmakers? Are they bring well, them in. you know, not as much anymore. They don't you know. tell smaller, more intimate stories because- Sad. They theaters now it needs to be an event to go right. to a theater yeah. in a lot of ways well, and since COVID. so I don't blame them for you know making these kinds of movies and I do think the ones that are breaking through are the ones that are sort of bridging the gap in some way like Barbie where it's right. a really singular voice Greta yeah. Gerwig that was terrific it's an absolutely it, it it feels like an auteur film but it's Barbie and mm -hmm. it's really you yeah know, but she was brilliant universal. that was brilliant. That yeah, brilliant. brilliant. But that that's brilliant. why it was what it was, I think. Right, right. Um, but I do hope that the tide changes a little bit. Yeah. And it would be nice. Movies, uh, you know, that are more relatable to stories people. like this, father-daughter movie mm -hmm. that could be, you know, have the time and money that those movies have because it really we shot this movie in 25 days. Yeah, which that's is very fast. Very fast mm -hmm. and difficult, really difficult. But it's still going to reach a ton of people on a streamer too. It's not like Yeah, eventually, right? Eventually. It is it's right. it's released only in theaters, which right. I'm really grateful. Ketchup Entertainment 
is a new distributor who's distributing this film, and they are taking chances on uh-huh. movies like ours and putting them out in Maybe. theaters. So the more companies that do that, the better. Uh, the better, because yeah. as of now, everybody's turning on Netflix and, and uh, right. Amazon. It's hard to, I, but by the way, I'm, so a, fun to go. I'm a mom, I get it. It's hard yeah. to pay for a babysitter, go out. You and know, people like the comfort of their home. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's very interesting. That's what happened after COVID. It's a very different world out but there. But it's yeah. almost like feels special again to go right. to the theater. I think yeah. so. Which is nice. I think like, so. We get to go and you never Eat get popcorn. the popcorn. And we, the, want and the popcorn. Yeah. we want the popcorn. We want the popcorn and the Twizzlers. Yeah. I really do miss the Twizzlers. <laughs> and they made it so enjoyable at most theaters. Like you can lie back in the yeah, chair. Well, that's, yeah. Well, they that's needed true. to upgrade most of the theaters. Yeah. I mean, I let's face what it. film I just saw. I think it was the Saturday night live one. Oh yeah, Did you, go, um, you went to the theater. Yeah, I was actually at the Grove, so I was in LA. Oh, great. But um, we were saying, like, hearing the room laughing at everything, like, yeah, it was just so much fun. better. It's fun. such a better experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Than some things are fine at home, but some things are better in a theater, so yeah. I think it's really exciting to have that experience. and Definitely, um, especially for comedy, like you said. Exactly. For this movie, it's so much funnier when there's a room people. of people laughing. And something special that happens in this movie that I've noticed because now we've started screening it is people are crying at the I'm end. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that is a very powerful thing to do yeah. alongside a stranger, I think. Yeah, but, insane. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, you obviously saw people react to it. And Do you stay in the theater when the when the film? So I stayed in the theater for the L.A. premiere because okay. I was so excited to see it yeah. with a big audience because I hadn't seen that yet. Um, but now I kind of just sneak in at the end to yeah. okay. see how it's playing. Yeah. Makes sense. So the first time that you did it in LA, yeah. like, was it crazy out of body? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Sure. And I was really just looking around at everybody saying like, yeah, reaction. Are they crying? Yeah, they of like course. It? Anytime somebody went to the bathroom, I was like, what? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are they leaving? Are they leaving? <laughs> are they leaving? <laughs> um, so have making movies that focus on relationships, whether it's family or romantic or whatever, made you think differently about your own life? Yeah, I mean, I think it is my um, way in to understand certain things in my life. And mm. it, it's also not always just my life. I'll notice something in a friend's life or in a cultural moment. And I just think that when, you know, with me and Michael and Mila, we were all able to talk about Parenthood, and right. mm-hmm. do you have do you have children? I have a three year old boy. Yeah. Oh, so cute. Yeah. Very cute. It's the best. Um, and sharing those stories, I think we we're all able to put some of that into mm-hmm. the movie, which is another thing that's great. You know, there's not this is not a movie with lots of explosions, and no one's in a superhero outfit. So we we're able to put our real lives into this right. movie in a big mm-hmm. way. Yeah. We talk a lot about relationships on this podcast. That's all. That's all we talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we talk only about relationships. Um, so, is there any advice your mom or a grandparent has given you about relationships or dating that you feel like you'll want to pass on to your little boy well, eventually? Well, my parents are divorced, but <laughs> <laughs> so let's not pass that on. Um, Did but- your mom remarry? My mom didn't remarry, but I do have, you know, my parents divorced when I was 10. So I do have memories of them together. And I remember so much laughter. Right. And my, both of my grandparents were also very funny and shared that. So that's, that is something I think is really important in a relationship for sure. To laugh. Laugh Laugh and have fun together. Having fun, enjoying your partner's company. Yeah. I agree. I'm not laughing anymore, and I'm married 61 years. I was going to say, I'm, <laughs> that's I'm no laughing matter. This is no <laughs> laughing matter. <laughs> Very good. I'm trying to think. I feel like you say that you don't, but then you low-key do. I do. Like at, We laugh at each other, yeah. but then we fight. At. We let no. Well, we 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 yeah. like to to have a little spar yeah. every once in a while. Yeah, I like that. Keeps you, it though. interesting. Keeping it real. Keeps it interesting. Yeah. Grandma Gal and I wanted to take a little break from the episode to tell you about some products we've been loving, and then we'll get right back to the conversation. It's never too early to start protecting your skin, and it's never too late either. We're both using One Skin, the peptide body moisturizer and body sunscreen. I love that this line was created by an all-woman team of skin longevity scientists. They developed a peptide called OS1 that's in all their topical supplements. It's not just a regular peptide, though. It's the first ingredient scientifically proven to reverse the skin's biological age. 
see as early as your 20s, your cells start going through a process called senescence, where your skin cells stop rejuvenating and producing collagen and hyaluronic acid. That's why your skin gets thinner with more lines and wrinkles as you get older. Not only does OS1 stop these senescent cells from robbing your skin of hydration and elasticity, it promotes cell turnover and makes your skin more resilient so it stays healthier over time. Their products are all backed by scientific claims and thousands of five-star reviews. Check out OneSkin for 15% off at oneskin.co using code EXCUSEMYGRANDMA. That's 15% off with the code EXCUSEMYGRANDMA at oneskin.co. One Skin has been so much of a lifesaver. I've been using it on my legs and my arms, and you will see a difference. Your skin really reacts, so try it. So let's move on to our little pop culture segment. Um, we were thinking about discussing the revival of like classic 2000s films because we're seeing it everywhere. Great. Um, Princess Diaries 3 confirmed. Yeah. Freaky Friday 2 coming out this summer. I think wait. people are dying for this stuff. Like yeah. why though? Like what are your well, thoughts I'm, on these reboot sequels? I feel like Gail has the right answer. Uh, no, <laughs> I, always does. I always have the right answer. But the truth is I really think people are tired of the violence. I, 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 I And they want something sweet that they also can share as a family. Yeah. And sit in the living room with their whatever age their child uh, mm-hmm. is and and have have a camaraderie together and ha- a nice thing without having to close your eyes. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, but aren't I, there new stories? Like these movies are so perfect. Well, I Although think that's like, why they're no st- new stories because they're perfect. They were perfect stories. Yeah, and I think it's you know to revive some of these classics with the original cast is really special. True, and to see where they are now, and you you know you hold a special place for these movies. Mm-hmm. So I think to continue the story is really great. I like less remaking movies that came out not that long ago. Right. That right. I don't understand as much. I'm like, that's when I want original content. But I do love the idea of like an audience seeing what is going on with Mia Thanopoulos, I think her name oh, was, from Princess yeah. Diaries. Like, They're I'm awesome. definitely buying a ticket to that. Lindsay Lohan, who's my friend, she is, you know, I can't wait to see her come back in Freaky Friday. Okay. I think that's going to be wonderful. So or I like- did Parent Trap. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Very cool. I, think I feel like that like was that. that was the only reboot that like was okay in my eye. But that was a remake, you know, like fifty, 50 years. years later. So that's yeah. different. But um, and they yeah. changed the subjects a little. Yeah, it's, they've become a little more modern. So I you mean, think you know, they have to be modernized. I think they modernize them a little. I mean, yeah. you know, they it's they're more diverse, they're more interesting. I think the characters have developed a little more, but the basic story is there, and it's heartwarming. So yeah. people like it. Uh, you I know, agree. it's something comforting. Yeah, it's like a big snuggly blanket. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. So you'll be seeing them, you think? I definitely will be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited, and I feel like people always make the Julie Andrews comparison to you. I can't oh, I see it. it. <laughs> Why? She's so gorgeous. I, I wish, I wish I was as talented as Julie oh, Andrews was. I mean, that I, I wish I was Anna and, and I wish I could yeah. sing. Yeah. It's who sound of music? I kind of yeah. feel like if we were casting the movie of you two, that's probably who we cast. <laughs> you know though. what? We've had so many meetings like along the years because I, I definitely want to go on the side of the industry you're on at some point. Yeah, and they always ask that question, like producers who would play you guys in a movie, and they all I always answer, and they are like really upset with my answers every what, time. Why? I don't know because they're like it's not about if they look like you. It's about oh, like, it's about uh, your your essence, right? Right, which is fair. But I'm okay, like, I don't know who's going to know our essence <laughs> unless <laughs> like, this seems like a that's you very design. hard. That's a very hard thing to know our real essence, right? Uh, <laughs> but I've been keeping that quiet for yeah. a long time. Well, why don't you? Who would you guys suggest for to play mm. the other person? What do you think for you? Yeah, I don't know. How's Anne Hathaway for you? Well, I just said that. Can oh, I didn't hear you. Say, oh, I think oh. my hearing is going. Oh. I didn't hear that. <laughs> is there another one? Is there another one? Well, I don't know. I like like Who else? not Jane Fonda for you because I no think Jane she, Fonda was was no, too liberal for me. Yeah, and not, like, different. <laughs> and I can't exercise. So right. other so since I I was I lived <laughs> Those Jane are big Fonda when I was young. I don't think Jane Fonda is going to do it. Oh. I don't know who's going to do. it. Well, at one time probably yeah. What's uh, Joan Rivers? <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's We've not also happening. Joan and Melissa. Yeah, but I feel, they're not actors. N- no. No, but she was great. Know. We might give this to you for homework. We, okay. we might have to. I think you we'll guys have to play think yourself. about that. I think <laughs> yeah. we'll have to think Why don't about we play it. Play ourselves. I like that. Um, okay, so listeners wrote in some dating questions for okay. Grandma Gal, but would love Holly your help with some of these. All some right. of your advice. Great. Okay, first one is, 
how do you break it to a friend that her boyfriend is not good for her? Grandma. Grandma first? Yes. Well, I think if you're going to lose the friendship. They specifically said a schlep and not good for her. <laughs> <laughs> I know what a schlep means. So yeah. <laughs> I think for those out there who don't know, it's somebody that brings nothing to the table. Okay. Um, I, I think to keep a friendship, you have to keep your mouth shut. Unless it's something really, really bad, I think everybody's entitled to make their own decisions. Unless it's something you see that's clearly toxic, I don't think you should butt into somebody else's relationship. But you don't know what it is before behind closed doors. I agree. I mean, I'm not going to go against Gail. I agree. Yeah. I think that that's the right move. I, I think so, too, unless like they're actually... Unless they do something bad. Or this is what I do. I feel like if a friend, and I've been the friend, like if they're complaining about something that their partner is doing, I would be like, yeah, I see that. Like validate yeah. that they do kind of stuff. Right, but then if that's If they bring it. it up, but don't bring it up if they seem exactly. happy and blissful. But then don't sometimes people get defensive, like they can say it, but you can't you can. say yes. it. Yes. Yeah, I think best it's, off is being quiet, putting a Okay, that's zip. a little hard, but I agree. Um, okay, this... Girl wrote, boyfriend will never sleep over, and when I'm at his place, he drives me home back Ooh. to mine at night. Is this an issue? Mm -hmm. Hallie? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would say that is an issue that she needs to confront him about. And where what is, is he, he going home to? Who is he going home yeah, to? Where is he going? But why is he sense. hiding her? Right. But I do think, like, is it possible he just has a better night's sleep by himself? But then communicate. Yeah, say then that. Then just say that. Yeah. She's clearly confused, so he hasn't said that to her. Well, I think she has to at some point bring it up. I yeah. think you can't be. And how do you bring it up? Just say, like. Say, I don't understand. Where little... are you going? <laughs> why aren't you? Why aren't we having a sleepover? I mean, you know, it, I think at this, in, you know, I never had sleepovers, so I don't know. Yeah. But I think in this day and age where everybody is sleeping, right. if they're sleeping and you're doing it, then sleep over mm -hmm. and have breakfast in the morning and see what the whole thing is about. Otherwise, it's just a, a, a nothing uh Sleepover. <laughs> yeah. I think approach it like not like the biggest deal ever that you're really mad, but just genuinely curious about like, I would like to have a sleepover with you. So why don't you? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Without being nasty. <laughs> right. I think you have to keep it light. <laughs> um, what is your advice for a bride on her wedding day? Either of you can take it. No, let Hallie well, take it. I'm not actually married. She's not married. <laughs> I, and I'm married too long, so. <laughs> we have been together for 12 years, but we're not actually married. Um, Is this the father of your little boy? Well, yes. Okay. Yes. Well, so you're together. Yeah, no, very much so. The Our wedding was canceled because of COVID. Oh. And then we had a child, and now we're just in Happy. a partnership. Um, but a bride on her wedding day, I would just say, try to enjoy the moment. And look around the room and don't, everything, something's going to go wrong right. and that's going to be okay. It's still going to be the greatest night of your life. Can I ask a quick follow-up? Yeah. Like, were you the girl who dreamed about her wedding day? No. Okay. So it's not like a huge miss that you're not doing that big ceremony and everything. No, I mean, I feel married. We both feel right. married. I call him my husband. Committed. So I, that's the most important thing. The only thing that I kind of miss is everyone in my family is a writer. So I kind of wanted to hear the speeches. Oh, oh that, Okay, that's true. That would have been so good. Yeah. Can they write speeches anyway? Yeah, I'm going to, you should suggest that. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, can you please write speeches for <laughs> Hallie anyway and then send them to me? Thank you. Um, Grandma, what advice? Well, you know, I was one of those brides that didn't really care about the wedding. So uh, my mom okay. cared. Well, I was 21, yeah, right. I was at school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know any yeah. of that it was kind of nonsense. Not, not a priority. I got the dress, I did like the dress. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it wasn't really about what they do now, but it was, I think girls are older now, the guys are older, it's a different process. Uh, I, I would say, like Hallie said, try to enjoy the day. Don't worry about changing three times to a long dress, to a short dress, to Isn't a goodbye crazy? dress. I never heard what of you this. You already committed to that. Well, oh. then, then that's your personality. But yeah. I would recommend it to brides to be not to do that. Uh, one dress is perfectly beautiful, and just wear it through the night, and that's it. And don't so worry be about present. be present okay. and and not not worry so much about all the details. Do you have your wedding dress still? No, I think I, I threw it in the garbage. What? It was beautiful. I'm it was sure. I'm sure you were such a beautiful bride. Uh, you know what? I think I think I had I it in a box. You did not throw your dress away. I think I did. I think I did. I don't keep anything. I'm not a Not keeper. even like an iconic 
No, I have yours up. Like it's beautiful. Dress. But it's, no, I don't, ha- I didn't have. And that, I saw this TikTok yesterday that this girl wore her grandmother's dress and I was like, one of no, my that's beautiful. Wore her grandmother's dress. I think that's beautiful. I had a beautiful dress and we, but I, I must say been... you could have worn it. What did it yeah. look like? It was, a, uh, it was a European lace and a little satin sash and it was oh. the days of the, like an over, like a little tunic, short sleeve oh. and a straight dress because I, I, I'm so small that I didn't want a big skirt yeah. and it was beautiful uh, and I have to tell you Wait, I take it back. This is, I'm, I'm glad we're I know it was that. I know it's not what people No, it sounds like. beautiful but like not modern I wore it to my one of my bridesmaids got married a year later and yeah. I took the dress out and I took it to the cleaner and I had him change the white satin band to green and I wore it to her wedding you wore yeah. your wedding dress to a friend's wedding <laughs> yeah, it was nothing that's a bold swing that was You're nothing for it. Well, but it I wasn't hear- really a we- it was I changed the color <laughs> I figured- uh, not of the did, not of the whole thing. not of the whole dress no, no she but- didn't say anything She. I figured you'd all know, never wear well, she it she didn't again. say anything to you she probably doesn't talk She. that's why maybe yeah. she, she doesn't talk to me anymore her. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I never thought of that. I hear sometimes girls say like, oh yeah, it's great because then you could like wear it again. And I'm like, this well, is, I why do you have to wear it again? Well, because you put such an investment. Who's saying that? People are wearing I their wedding like dresses again? Say that. I think it's just known universally it's a one-time wear. It's a one-time yeah. dress. Yeah. Unless it's like maybe the third dress of the night that they're switching into. Well, that's a trend that I think is like excessive. It's so silly. Yeah. yeah. Although, I don't know. I oh, like you're going to be a three-dress kind of a girl, I can tell. You want it. <laughs> Maybe you should. know what you should. I I think that that okay. feels right. I feel first, supported. first you got to get the ring before you get the dress. Yes, uh, all these things need to happen. Um, <laughs> but you know, fun to think. Okay, last question. How can I help my sister realize she needs her mom in college? She wants to cut everyone off, but I want to tell her that you still need a parent even later in life. Oh. You take that, Allie. You want? She wants. Her, wants her, her sister, sister to, to call realize. her mom more? Yeah. 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 Those are kind of our most selfish years, college years. So I understand that. But, you know, maybe her mom can just call and check in, see how she's doing, she's and just let her know the she's room. there for her and, you know, thinking about her and, and see. I think it, it needs to be her choice. You know, this doesn't apply to us because we talk, we talk to each other. I, I spoke to your mother too. 15 yeah. times a day in I mean, college same. or whenever. Yeah. So I, I feel actually there might be more to this story. And we don't know what hurt this child True. is feeling. And hopefully the mom really should reach out. But, some, but yes, but it also might not be hurt and might just be the nature of like you're away and you're in your own bubble. Yeah. And but it takes five seconds to make a phone call. She's yeah. certainly looking on Instagram. So one, yeah. one, <laughs> she can take a moment out from Instagram and yeah. call her mom. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the sister goes to the mom maybe. Yeah. Sometimes my mom, like around three o'clock, will say like, "Okay, well, you know, I'll talk to you tomorrow." And I'm like, "Do you really think we're not going to talk thirty times?" The rest of the what, day. What, who, yeah. what is this show you're putting on that we're going to end That's our the end of communications the day. at three in the afternoon? I know. That's so funny. <laughs> I feel we like talk a hundred times a day. You turn your phone off. Well, I turn my yeah. phone off from my, my cell phone off at five o'clock yeah. because I don't want to hear from you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Works over. Uh, okay, we're going to end the episode with a game we play with all our guests. It's okay. Grandma Gail's Old Fashioned Dating Quiz. So we'll figure out whether you're more traditional or modern in like your relationship value. Okay. Okay. Would you rather receive a call or a text from your partner if it's just to say hi? A call. Would you sleep with someone on the first date? <laughs> well, depends who they are. <laughs> okay. okay, so potentially. Dating apps or setups? Well, I have been in a relationship before dating apps, so. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you were set up. Set ups, yeah. Would you move in together before getting engaged or wait? (laughs) As somebody who (laughs) had a child out of wedlock, I think that answers itself. Yes. This Um, is more modern. This has become more modern. Yeah, it's not where she's split so far. Right. Um, do you think one person should pay for dates or should you split or alternate? I think alternating is good. And then... Not on the first date. I still think yeah. it's nice to be taken out to dinner on your first date. Yeah, I think so too. Especially if they ask you. Yeah. Um, when it comes to social media, do you think you should post the person, launch your relationship, or keep them off social? Really depends on the person. I, I think less is more. Mm-hmm. 
She's divided. You're pretty divided, maybe a little more modern, but not much. Pretty split. Pretty yeah. split. Okay. Which is well, what's I just, happening. Because I just don't want to judge somebody that sleeps with somebody on the first right. date. No, it's not course. necessarily for me, but anyone right. listening, yeah. like, oh, no the, judging. Of course. Yeah, you know? no, of course. Every, I mean, some people come, they're all one way or all right. other, but it's just, everyone's a little different. Yeah. I'm split, too. So, Hallie, thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you guys us. for having and me. And good luck with the film. I know it's so going to be wonderful. You're good so kind. Thank you. out this Friday, guys. Anything else you want everyone to know? No, just please go see it in theaters this Friday. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for you. having me. This was so fun. And you can follow us on Excuse My Grandma on all our socials, and we will see you next week. <laughs>